Hey, my name is Jacob. Welcome to True Roo. This is a channel all about self-sufficiency and the locavore way of life with plenty of Aussie shenanigans thrown in for good measure. Here in the Adelaide Hills in South Australia, we finally got some decent rain with some nice cold weather, which means mushroom season is upon us and I am very excited. Now, you're probably all aware of the mushroom murder trial that at the time of recording is actually in the courts right now in Victoria. For those who are not up to speed, in 2023, four people were admitted to a hospital in Victoria, Australia, suffering from what we now know to be toxic mushroom poisoning. Three of them tragically died and a woman has been charged with three counts of murder and one count of attempted murder. Now, I'm not here to speculate or make judgment calls. I have my opinions, obviously, but Churu is not the place for that. Churu is supposed to be a fun, silly place with a little bit of educational stuff sprinkled over the top. But I do have a whole series on foraging, with a strong emphasis on mushrooming, so I thought now would be a good time to talk about some potentially deadly mushrooms that you might stumble across in your foraging adventures. And don't worry if you're not from this gorgeous country, this video might still be relevant because pretty much all the mushrooms we're going to be talking about can be found all over the world. So let's get to it. So there are reportedly over 14,000 different species of mushrooms with apparently only 100 being toxic to humans. This is likely to be a gross underestimate as first of all there are many new species being discovered all the time. Different countries have different estimates so there's not a universal consensus per se and many mushrooms are yet to have their toxicity recorded as in how poisonous are they for humans. You can chemically analyze some of these mushrooms but the only real way to know if a mushroom is toxic or poisonous or deadly or whatever you want to say is to eat it and that is a test that I certainly wouldn't partake in. So I'm going to talk about some of the more common toxic mushrooms that you might find in your foraging adventures. There will be citations and links in the description below so you can do your own research, you can follow through with this, not just take my word for it. And I'm also getting a fair bit of information from this wild mushrooming guide. This is published by the CSIRO and co-authored, co-created by Tom May, who fun fact actually took the stand in the mushroom poisoning trial and to lend his expertise on the case. So it's a good read. Agaricus xanthodermis, the yellow staining mushroom. Now you're gonna have to excuse my pronunciation on a lot of the Latin in this because uh, I have no idea. Some of these words are like, whoa. The yellow staining mushroom is a very common toxic mushroom that can be found all over the world and has been introduced to Australia as well and causes the most mushroom related poisonings in Australia. This is probably because the yellow staining mushroom looks a lot like a common field mushroom or something that you might buy from a supermarket. So it is often mistaken as an edible when in fact it's probably not. It has one very distinctive feature however, if damaged or bruised it will stain yellow, hence the name yellow staining mushroom. You give this guy a couple of little flicks and almost immediately or within a few minutes uh, yellow staining will occur. However this mushroom is not actually deadly per se unless you have a severe allergic reaction which is going to be the exception to most of these mushrooms. If you have an allergy well then that's too bad. But for the average punter, it's not deadly, but it can be quite toxic. Upon consumption, you're likely to get severe gastrointestinal upset, stomach cramping, hot flushes, and sweating. But some say the yellow standing mushroom only affects about 50-50 of the people that eat it. Some people eat it and apparently fine. Others eat it and end up pooping their pants. So you could roll those dice, but I wouldn't recommend it. Chloroforum brunium, the shaggy parasol. I talked about this in my shaggy ink cap video because it is a common lookalike, so it's worth mentioning. Many claim this this mushroom to be edible, others say again, you're going to get gastrointestinal upset even after cooking it. So most field guides recommend avoiding it. Despite it not being deadly, there's plenty of guaranteed non-toxic mushrooms out there, so why risk it? Chlorophylla molody dolobites. <laughs> I'm so sorry about the pronunciation. The false parasol. This mushroom allegedly causes the most mushroom related poisonings in the USA, not so much over here, but there have been a few reported cases in Australia. This mushroom resembles the highly sought after graceful parasol, a delicious edible mushrooms, and that's why it causes poisoning because people simply mistake it for something they could eat despite it being quite toxic. The false parasol is apparently yet to kill anyone, so it's toxic, but again, not deadly per se. But it will cause severe pain in the guts. That's gonna be a pretty common symptom throughout this video, accompanied of course by vomiting and good old fashioned diarrhea. Corpinopsis, I'm not even gonna 
Attempt to pronounce this one, I'll just put it here. Do -do 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 -blah -blah. Common end cap. Another shroom that can be found all over the world, and I mentioned this one for two reasons. One, it's sometimes mistaken for the shaggy end cap, which, as I mentioned, is a delightful edible mushroom. And two, it has a weird feature known as the sulfurum syndrome. Now, I'm not the most versed on this, but my understanding is this mushroom only causes toxicity or poisoning when it's accompanied with alcohol. It can cause facial reddening, nausea, a good friend vomiting agitation, palpitations, tingling limbs, and in extreme cases, coma. And this can occur a few days after eating this mushroom. Like you can eat this mushroom or a bunch of these mushrooms, then three days later go to the pub with your mates and end up having a bad time. And not because the bar only plays 12 bar blues and Beatles covers, but because of the Dysophyrum syndrome. Omphalotus nidiformis, the ghost mushroom. This super cool mushroom is popular for mycotourism because it's bioluminescent. It flippin' glows in the dark. This is one of the few bioluminescent mushrooms here in Australia, which makes it super cool. Yet I mention it because it looks a fair bit like the common edible mushroom that you'd find all over the places in pretty much every supermarket in the world, the oyster mushroom. So people do often mistake this for oyster mushrooms, end up eating it and have a bad time. Now again, this is not deadly per se, but it will stuff your guts up. So just admire its freaky dicky nature and don't shove it down your gob. Amanita muscaria, the fly aggregate or the fly amanita, arguably the most iconic mushroom of all time. I mean, it's not even an argument, dude, from Super Mario Brothers to the, the Smurfs, Holmes, and other topical references too. This mushroom has been used throughout history in many ancient and modern cultures alike for ceremony, rituals, tradition, mythology, and so much more. This is like, it's the mushroom of mushrooms, right? Everyone knows this mushroom. Aside from containing some yucky toxins, this bad boy contains some pretty powerful psychedelic substances too. Most notably muscimol that when extracted has been used for both traditional medicinal uses and recreationally as well. This is not your so-called magic mushrooms per se, that would be your psilocybin or psilocybe containing mushrooms, but it still has some psychoactive components in it, which of course makes it illegal, here in Australia anyway. And due to some other toxins contained within the Amanita muscaria, which can cause severe gastrointestinal upset, you can't just go and pick these bad boys and munch them down and expect to have a good time. They must be processed first. There have been reports of seizures, coma, and in some very rare cases, death. They sure are cute as heck though. So yes, you have to process it first, which as mentioned is illegal. So for legal reasons, I will say Churu does not condone the picking and eating of illegal mushrooms. Now let's talk about the really scary stuff. Hey, but, but don't be scared, I was only joking, don't be scared. I'll be here with you the whole time and so will my beard. So we'll look after you, okay? Let's get the big boy out of the way. Amanita phylloides, the death cat mushroom. Probably the most famous of the most deadly mushrooms and probably the most deadly mushroom at least that we know of on Earth. This mushroom can be found all over the planet, including right here in South Australia. In fact, I've even stumbled across it at one point. Not as common as you would think, though. This is, of course, the mushroom that is the culprit for the mushroom poisoning trials going on as I record this video. So this is some pretty scary and pretty serious stuff. I don't want to make light of it. This Bad mofo contains a wide array of toxins, amatoxins that cause cell death, catastrophic liver and kidney failure, along with other symptoms like your vomit, your poops, your tummy ouchies, and a lot of the times death. Apparently 50 grams is all it takes to kill an adult weighing about 70 kilos. When consumed, the usual symptoms occur, your sore tummy, your extreme vomiting, explosive diarrhea, all that fun stuff. But then, seemingly, these symptoms will go away. So a victim, someone who's consumed this, might assume that things are all well again. Well, in fact, the damage has already been done. 24 to 40 hours later, depending on the person, depending on the quantity consumed, catastrophic liver and kidney failure will occur. They go into catastrophic shutdown. It is said at this stage, depending on the quantity eaten, of course, the patient will have a 50-50 chance of survival. And even those who manage to pull through will likely have permanent kidney and liver damage, like forever, for the rest of their lives. Like they'll live but they won't live well. This is irreversible damage. The poisoning has no cure. There's no prevention other than eat, don't eat it. <laughs> and there's no treatment other than like symptom mitigation. So trying to stop this person from dying. And to top it all off, the pain that this mushroom causes is meant to be excruciating. Like this is not a very good way to go. They are mycorrhizal mushrooms, meaning they need a host tree to form a symbiotic relationship with and simply will not exist without them. In this case, the death cap mushroom's best buddy is an oak tree. 
This means that without an oak tree, or without a symbiotic relationship with a tree, these mushrooms simply can't exist. So you can't farm them, you can't grow them out of a kit, you have to forage for them. So please be careful when out and about, folks. Go out foraging with somebody that you trust and somebody who is an expert or very, very experienced because these mushrooms do look like your common button mushrooms. They do kind of, I mean, not really, but you can see how they can be mistaken, like all white mushrooms. So please be super careful when out and about. Another deadly mushroom that is kind of common and also has a pretty dope name, Gallerina marginate. I don't know how to pronounce the marginate being the Gallerina species. Um, which is also commonly called the funeral bell or the common name that I prefer because it's so much more metal is the deadly skull cap. These little dudes are all over the place and have been reported right here in South Australia and they contain the same amatoxins or similar amatoxins to that of the death cap. I don't believe they're as potent but still very much deadly. Do not eat these guys. I mention these mushrooms because well they're deadly for a start and some people do pick them mistaking them for our local variety of magic mushrooms, the Psilocybe Seberiginosa. They kind of look similar, and this is why I mention it, because a lot of folks are out there looking for a good time, and they might end up having a very bad time. Of course, Psilocybe Seberiginosa and any magic mushrooms containing any sort of psilocybe or psilocybin is illegal in Australia, so don't pick them, kids. PSA over. One more honorable mention, Paxillus involipapapa, the poison pax. Now, this is... I don't think I've ever seen this mushroom in the wild. It's nowhere as deadly as the aforementioned mushrooms, the deadly mushrooms, but there have been reported deaths. Most common, I believe it's from prolonged use, so the building up of these toxins and a couple of rare circumstances. Now I mentioned this one as an honorable mention only because it kind of looks similar to Lacarius Deliciosus, the pine mushroom, of which is my favorite mushroom. Check out all my videos coming at you. Like honestly, go check out our foraging playlist. Pine mushrooms are awesome. There's not too many lookalikes and you should be able to easily tell the difference between the poison packs and the common pine mushroom. But just to be sure, I thought I'd mention it because people have died from eating this mushroom. Now, of course, I can't mention every single mushroom that may or may not be poisonous for you. I only pick these ones out because they're the more common ones and they kind of look like something that you are probably gonna wanna forage for. Uh, i.e. they have lookalikes and of course, the death cap and the deadly skull cap are the deadliest mushrooms on earth. And of course, the death cap is in the news presently because of the yucky murder trial that's going on. So be safe out there, folks. And as I mentioned in all of my foraging videos, please go out there with somebody you know, do your research, jump on the forums, check out my foraging playlist tips on how to sort of better educate yourself and some smart practical ideas of how to get better and not and to mitigate risk. And the rule is always, always, if you are not 100, 100% certain that this mushroom is safe to eat, don't eat it. It's just not worth it. Go and get a pizza. I made this video because I don't want people to be afraid of mushrooms, but I also want people to be very cautious. I absolutely love foraging. It's a massive passion of mine, and I like sharing that passion with you guys. And I do sometimes get afraid that our governments on any side of the political spectrum, both at a state and federal level, do tend to do sort of create knee-jerk policies when something tragic like murder occurs. The last thing I want is for a bunch of people to get really riled up, really scared, and then for either the politicians or Big Mushroom, yes, that's the thing, to use this as an opportunity to try to push forward policies that will stop people from foraging, i.e. making foraging illegal. It happens all the time. It happened recently with the bow hunting ban in South Australia. It could happen with foraging as well. And if enough people get scared, then they will believe this to be a decent policy and these policies will end up getting pushed through. Yes, there are deadly mushrooms out there. Most of them are not. If you know what you're doing, you go out with people who are smart and educated and experienced, you're probably gonna have a better time than not. So jump on your forums, watch my playlist and follow other people's. Do a course, there's plenty of courses kicking around. Well, there's a few kicking around. Get some books, okay? So these two I recommend highly. This one is a great Kickstarter, for, this is Australian based anyway. Um, I also recommend Mycelium Running by Paul Stamets. This is not a foraging specific, but it, it'll make you fall in love with mushrooms, I guarantee it. Check out some mushroom documentaries. I think fungi are like the coolest Zero. things ever. Oop, I'll have to bleep that. It's the first swear word of the video. I tried really hard to keep this one family friendly. <laughs> we got through in the end there. Mushrooms are our friends. Some of them can hurt you if you eat them. Most of them will make you smile inside and out. So I've been Jacob. You've been watching Churu. Please share this video around. If you like this video, hit subscribe and blah, 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 and all the YouTube stuff. I love you very much. Farewell for now.